Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 644. The progesterone IUD is a new prevention for postmenopausal bleeding. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at Biobalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin, and today we have a HealthCast for the postmenopausal women in the audience and all those people who love them. So I just want to preface this, this whole HealthCast on the fact that sometimes, as doctors, we realize that there is a better treatment for something that the FDA hasn't approved of yet. We do that with pellets. We know that pellets and testosterone for women has not been approved by the FDA, but that we need it and we need to have a compounded uh, medication for it. So today we're going to talk about using an FDA-approved device, which is the Moraine IUD. It's also called um, the... um, There's a couple other girl names for it, but it's basically an IUD that has a little packet of progesterone on it. And instead of using that for birth control, we use that in postmenopausal women to keep them from developing a thick lining in their uterus from taking estrogen or from developing and from developing uterine cancer from estrogen. So it's a it's a long lasting eight year treatment with one device put into the uterus, and it will last for eight years. So you don't have to every night take a progestin, progesterone, something that actually counteracts the effects of estrogen in the uterus. You're protecting your uterus with this IUD. Now, I've been doing this for patients who bled with just regular progesterone, and I don't know why they did it, but they don't do it when we put an IUD in that has the progesterone on it. But it has never been really well accepted by the GYN community, um, and I'm not the one putting in the IUD, so I have to f- find uh, friendly doctors who agree with me that this is a good way to prevent bleeding in postmenopausal women who are on hormones. So um, I was ecstatic when I read the May 2023 uh, journal for OBGYN management, and it is, it's a great journal. It always has very uh, useful kind of articles in it, but it, there was a long article about all the benefits of using these IUDs. And I'm just going to say Mirena, but I mean all, the whole family of progesterone IUDs. So um, Kyla is the other name of the, uh, of the IUD. Uh, that's a smaller one for women who haven't had babies, but are still menopausal and still need to have uh, estrogen and a uh, a balance for their estrogen, and they can use the smaller version of the Mirena IUD. In any case, um, I, the IUDs don't contain any estrogen. This is just progesterone or progestin to keep the lining thin so that you don't bleed from estrogen, which makes the lining of the uterus thicker. That's the biggest risk and the biggest problem that we have in giving estrogen, and it's one of the reasons why Many OBGYNs don't like giving hormones because then patients bleed. Then what do you do with that? Then they have to have a biopsy or they have to have an ultrasound or a procedure. And so it gets complicated. So in their world, it's easier to not do hormones at all. Yet for the patient, the patient needs the hormones. Patient is miserable, hot flashes, night sweats, painful intercourse, um, uh, depression, migraines, all the things that come with menopause. Some people have it worse than others. Not everybody needs hormones. I I agree with that. There are some people who I don't know why, but they seem to escape. And then there are some people who need it to just like wake up in the morning. So there's a a big range. Everyone is an individual, and that's how we treat our patients at BioBalance. So this is one of those things where we recognize that this could really help, but we had trouble 
uh, convincing OBGYNs to help us by putting these in for our patients. So now that we have an article that agrees with what we have wanted to do for our patients, then uh, a research article and lots of different experts talking about this in a positive fashion, then we will be able to offer this to our patients and make their lives and our lives a lot easier. So they won't have bleeding and we won't have to worry about their bleeding. So one of the reasons that the OBGYN um, article really likes the uh, IUD idea is because it's one cost, it's cost effective. It's one cost for either insurance or the patient and then no cost for eight more years. That is worth a lot. And it probably progesterone, if you're paying for pure progesterone or, or prometrium, it's probably about $100 um, every couple months, every two months. So say $50 a month. So that would save you $50 a month times 12 months times eight years. So you can do the math. I can't actually, <laughs> in my head at least. Um, so that is, and it also saves you time and it saves you bleeding because these things are very effective. The, the way they work is it's a little piece of plastic, basically. It look, most of them look kind of like little ram's horns or kind of curved on the outside. And they have a stem. And on that stem, and I'll show you a picture here, on that stem is a little tiny packet of progestin. And that packet is, is uh, devised by the uh, pharmacist so that it will dissolve slowly over eight years. And so you get just progestin in the uterus, but it's not going to your whole body. You don't have the side effects of progestins because we know that now that progestins like Provera can actually increase heart disease. Progestins like Provera can actually um, increase your risk of breast cancer, but not if it's just inside your uterus. Very little of it gets to anywhere else and it is very beneficial inside your uterus because it keeps your uterine wall from thickening, bleeding, and becoming uterine cancer. So in this way, we have figured out a way to put the medicine exactly where we need it, but it doesn't have to go through the rest of your body and cause trouble. Now, I would like it a little better if it was purely progesterone, but they haven't gotten there yet. In any case, the IUD is put into a woman's uterus by going to the gynecologist, and the gynecologist, it's, it, you're in the same position you're in, that horrible position you have to be in for a pap smear. But it doesn't take very long. The, um, the gynecologist has to uh, kind of straighten the uterus out, maybe give you some numbing medicine, depending on how sensitive you are, and then dilate the cervix a little bit, make it open a little bit, and then slide this skinny little tube in. It's like a straw that they that has the IUD in it. Then they take the straw out, and the IUD stays up in the uterus. It's it's brilliant. Anyway, um, it is not in general. It's not painful. In general, you can't feel it. And there's a little string that comes out of the cervix that the a uh, physician can then, I used to put these in, that can then kind of turn so it curves around the cervix so it doesn't hurt you or your or your partner. Um, it is, it's kind of like a fishing line and you can feel it to make sure, yeah, it's still in there. Some people worry about that, but it's more worrisome when you have somebody who's having periods every month and then they worry, oh, when I took my tampon out, did I pull on the string or something like that. So that's not really worrisome for people who are menopausal because in general, this is going to keep you from bleeding at all. So no tampons, no bleeding, so no real risk of it uh, coming out. If your doctor thinks, ooh, this is kind of a difficult insertion, maybe your uterus is scarred a little bit, maybe there's their, uh, your cervix is scarred and was a little hard to get in, they may order an ultrasound and look and make sure it's in the right place. If it's not, they can just pull on the string and kind of pull it down a little bit and that readjusts it. So it's, you know, it's not brain surgery, but it does save you time and disease and it saves you bleeding. Honestly, one of the things in the article they were talking about was it keeps people from being anemic, from bleeding from the uterus. So 
in that way, you have more energy, you have more iron, you have more red cells that are carrying your oxygen. So it's it, that way, it's really healthy. In another way, you're not going to get uterine cancer. So that's an amazing uh, prevention. Um, I was I was ecstatic when I read this. I can't even tell you how happy I was. So um, one of the little tricks some of the experts suggested, which I'm not sure any OBGYNs are listening to this, but if you are, uh, they they like to give um, a woman a week of progesterone or progestin and have them have a withdrawal bleed, which means they the patient bleeds for two or three or five days and empties the uterus out before they put this in. They find that it doesn't have as much uh, breakthrough bleeding after the insertion process. So that's um, that actually is a brilliant idea, and I thought that would be a great um, a great kind of adjunct to this so that uh, the doctors would have a better outcome after they put the uh, IUD in. Now, there are some people who aren't going to be able to have an IUD, uh, a, a Mirena IUD or any IUD, and that is that is secondary to some things such as some people have ablations of the lining of the uterus before their menopausal and because they have to, they're bleeding so heavy, it's either that or they have to have a hysterectomy. So because you have an ablation, usually, you know, the walls of the, of the inside of the uterus are kind of open. But when you have an ablation, it scars each side and then they sometimes scar together. So there's really no place to put the IUD between these two layers. So if that's the case, having an ablation would be a contraindication to having one of these IUDs or any IUD um, in the uterus. Makes it much more difficult or impossible. If you're somebody who has a septum in the uterus, we usually don't worry about septums in the uterus unless it's because pregnancy um, there are more pregnancy losses in people with septums down the middle of their uterus. The uterus op um, cavity should be kind of a kind of a rounded, open area. But if there's a septum, there's kind of a wall down the middle, halfway down, and it doesn't have great blood flow. So when um, embryos come down the uh, fallopian tube, because they are usually uh, fertilized in the tube, and then they come down to the uterus. If they implant on that septum, they don't get good blood flow and it causes a miscarriage. So sometimes the septums are removed surgically. If that's the case, you can still have an IUD. If it hasn't been removed and you had a successful pregnancy or you didn't, but it's still there, then having an IUD would be problematic. It would not fit. It wouldn't fit properly. It wouldn't go up into the fundus or the top of the uterus like it should. So that would be another reason why you couldn't have uh, an IUD. If you've already had uterine cancer and had radiation or something like that, that would be a contraindication. You couldn't have this. If you had um, a fibroid that was what we call submucosal, which means it's the side of the fibroid is pushing into the lining of the uterus, into that cavity, then oftentimes putting a, an IUD in will actually rub against it and cause it to bleed. So that would be a contraindication to having one of these. Although other fibroids that are in the wall of the uterus but not in the, the, that don't border the lining of the uterus, um, those, those are great because this the progestin actually helps shrink those and keeps them from growing from the estrogen. So that's also an option. If you, have, if you don't have any of these other contraindications, it is a really good treatment for fibroids. Fibroids are the most common reason people have hysterectomies. So in the end, I mean, a hysterectomy is not the worst thing. I mean, I had one. That it's, the hysterectomy itself was, when done in, with good... A good surgeon is is great. You don't bleed anymore. You don't have you know you don't have to you don't have pelvic pain. I didn't have endometriosis anymore. I mean you know so it does uh, cause or or end up with a lot of benefits. However, not everybody wants to have surgery, and surgery puts you out of you know you can't work for six weeks, things like that. So, or maybe less if you have a laparoscopic or a, a da Vinci hysterectomy. But it does 
you know, anytime you have surgery, there's a risk. So if you don't want that, this would decrease the growth of the fibroids in general, and it would decrease your risk of having a hysterectomy. It won't prevent all of them, but it will decrease your risk or the chances of you having it. So in many ways, this article confirmed all the things that I believed that the um, IUDs do and the things that I have seen as outcomes of um, in my patients who have estrogen and testosterone pellets. They don't have to take anything every day. The IUD is in there doing its job 24-7, putting the progesterone in the spot we want the progesterone to go into. So um, it just confirmed what I believe, but it also gave me uh, more substance to back up my request or my patient's request to have this done so that they don't have to take progestin or progesterone uh, to balance out the estrogen that they're taking. The answer is not don't take estrogen. <laughs> Although in some cases, if we can't do this and progesterone doesn't work, that may be the only answer I have. But it's, it's too easy an answer and most women need their estrogen. They need some. And and that doesn't mean your uterus likes it and your uterus won't bleed. It just means the rest of your body needs it. So I'm hoping that I gave you some tools to work with when, you, if you have any of these issues with menopause, not being able to take your progestin, progesterone, excuse me, uh, or if you want to just take pellets and not, and can't remember your progesterone, then this might be a good option for you and one that you can talk to your gynecologist about because that's who puts these in. And um, I hope that I saved you some bleeding, some anemia, <laughs> some pelvic pain, some uh, and, and a lot of medication that you don't have to put in that goes to your whole body. So thank you for listening today, and I'll see you again next week. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.